Trees are so important in our gardens. In fact, not only in our gardens, but in the entire environment around us. Well, what do they do in our spaces? Well, number one, they give us this beautiful structure. They provide us with the framework of our garden. Not only that, on a practical level, they provide us with beautiful shade, which is wonderful to sit underneath. They create depth and distance even in the smallest of gardens. But of course, for me, what's wonderful is that trees give us that gateway of allowing nature into our garden. And also, of course, look here, to attach orchids to it and to allow a bird feeder to hang from it. Probably the best is even just a kid's swing. But there always is a but. And this comes in when either young trees are not trained and controlled properly or even established trees are not maintained. And it could end up costing you a lot of money. So folks, why do we prune? Number one, if there's any dead or diseased branches, they need to get taken away. Because if they fall, they could cause injury, they could break things, buildings, patio furniture, and even worse, end up on someone's head. And number two, if we don't maintain them when they are young, we could have crooked branches, and even worse, a crooked, beautiful stem in which case the tree is already at a disadvantage. And another reason we would prune, of course, is to be able to allow light in. Especially if we are wanting to garden underneath this area, it often is a very good idea to remove certain branches, which will then allow enough filtered light through so you can grow some lovely plants underneath it. Now, normally when it comes to pruning, a general heavy duty lopper can do the job up to 32 millimeters. But guys, anything beyond that, well, you're gonna need a bit of heavy duty equipment. And of course, the guys at Builders have got that sorted. We need chainsaws. There are times when I am going to suggest that you do not touch the chainsaw. And these are the following items. When there's a branch overhanging any power lines, any municipal feeds, any electrics, guys, rather call in, a tree feller for that who has insurance. If your branches are hanging precariously over a building, which if cut could cause major damage, then you call in the professionals. And the third one sounds like common sense, but it's not so common after all. If you have got to climb and remove yourself off Mother Earth, and you're having to climb right into the tree without safety equipment, then you call in the professionals. When choosing which branches to cut, find the strong leader branches, the ones that give the tree its structure and shape. Then decide which branches you're wanting to cut to better shape the tree. The overall size of the tree will determine how many branches you can remove. But remember that you should never remove more than 25% of a younger, smaller tree and no more than 10% of a larger, older tree. Pruning during autumn and early spring is typically best as it allows time to heal, which promotes new growth. Whereas pruning in summer will slow the tree's growth with less leaf surface. With deciduous trees, pruning in winter when there are no leaves on the tree makes this job much easier. Dead and diseased branches should be cut off immediately. This is the dude I'm talking about. Now, hold up, don't be scared. If you follow the basics, which I'm gonna talk you through, I can use it and therefore you can use it. This is the Ryobi 40cc two-stroke petrol chainsaw. Guys, if you look after it and if you follow my instructions, it's gonna give you loads of hours of good cutting. Now, a couple of things we need to know about any chainsaw in general. Number one, this over here is where the chain oil sits. And it's really important that you always make sure that your chain oil is full. The chain oil literally from here lubricates your chain. And if you don't have that, and if you forget about that, it's gonna seize up. So always important. Next up guys is the petrol and fuel tank. Now the petrol is unleaded and what you do is you mix 40 mils of the Ryobi oil into one liter of petrol, unleaded petrol that is. Of course, this guy comes with all the safety features that any Ryobi product will have. It's got the chain lock, which you can see it's in that position. When it comes back, the chain now will be able to move. 
Next up is the kill switch, which is the red guy. There's the on and the off. Very important to know where that is. We've got the choke, all right? Out, in. And right here is the primer, which you're gonna push that a few times before you start this baby up. And a really important safety feature is the two-stage throttle. And there is no ways that you will be able to engage the engine and engage the blade without one, two, in order to get going. And lastly, there's the bar with the chain. It's very, very important, folks, to always check the tension of your chain. And you need to do that every three or four cuts, just as a safety. If this chain gets too loose, it can come off and it can cause injury. As a rule of thumb, if you are able to lift it and it drops, without actually leaving the teeth off the bar, then you are good to go. If you find that the chain is loose, folks, all I want you to do is you loosen these two nuts over here, just loosen a bit. And then there's a point here where you can put the flat screwdriver in and there you turn it and it then tightens the chain. Once you've tightened it to the right tension, you then re-fasten these nuts. Folks, there is some maintenance involved with the chain. Number one, when it gets too blunt, you can either go and buy a new one from your local builders, or you can actually sharpen it. Now, if you want to know how to sharpen it, there's a great clip on the builder's blog on how to do that. Talking of injury and preventing that, we need to go through the PPE. Now, very important, guys. You're gonna need some safety glasses. You're gonna need a good pair of gloves, earmuffs, and of course, one times helmet in case something falls on your head. Right, with everything in place, I've got the PPE. I have said chainsaw, let's get to it. It's always important, never let your chain touch the soil. As soon as it touches the soil, that soil gets worked into the chain and it grinds up your chain and really makes it last for very, very little time at all. Um, so bar lock is forward. It has been primed, choke out, and let's give it a whirl. The first thing we're going to be doing is something called an undercut. You literally go just underneath, not more than halfway through the branch. Your second cut is going to be just in front of that undercut. It's going to be about two centimeters. Beautiful! That's what we want. Now, folks, imagine if we hadn't done the undercut. Look at that there, you would see. Do you see that tearing? It would have continued all the way through and torn this whole part off. And if I had gone to straight cutting it right here, can you imagine all that weight and what would happen? It would have pulled this and probably stripped all the way, all the bark down the main trunk and really caused terrible scarring. Plus it's quite dangerous as well. Now without any load on the tree, because I'm just literally left at the stump, I can simply do my final cut and neaten it up. As a rule of thumb, work one centimeter from the trunk of the tree. If you cut it too close, it causes a terrible scar. Beautiful smooth cut and you can see we've left enough space. There certainly is not going to be any major scarring here. So remember, first off, it's an undercut. In front of it, two to five centimeters straight through and as you get there you'll notice it starts pulling and tearing and then stopping where your undercut is and then finally last cut and then neatening off and that folks is the 101 on dealing with trees lifting the canopy by doing this corrective pruning earlier on in the tree's life and by staying on top of it as an annual gardening activity just makes life so much better and so much more manageable. And most importantly, you can do it yourself. Remember, everything I've used today is available at your local builders, either in store or online. Remember to also visit the blog where you can learn more great gardening techniques like chainsawing. <laughs> Remember, get to builders and get it done.